Um, hey everybody, it's Chris and Kim, <laughs> and we're filming simultaneously to my personal Facebook post and to the Wolf Camp the Conservation uh, Facebook post, and then we'll post it after the words to the Wolf College uh, website. And this is day 10 of our physical distancing live broadcast from s approximately 6 to 6.30 in the evenings. And uh, today we're going to do a hodgepodge of things, finishing up some skills around the campfire. We're going to make tongs, hopefully, <laughs> to move coals and other things. We're going to uh, uh, make a traveling match. That means being able to save fire till the next day. We're going to do an introduction to burn bowls. We're going to... Um, what was oh, a crisscross method of being able to start a fire after there's only cordage. some one little coal. Uh, Kim's going to um, do a couple more cordage skills, splicing and double reverse wrap. We can get I to can that. I can do triple too. Yeah, yeah. and then um, that's going to be it around the fire. Although tomorrow we're going to hopefully probably make an herbal salve. Uh, and or start the following one. day, start one, yes. And then the following day we're going to cook some wild edibles out of the yard. Uh, things that you might find anywhere in your yard to cook up on Friday. Over the weekend maybe some birding, although we might switch things around because it's going to rain quite a bit. So we might do birding uh, sooner because it's supposed to be nice gets tomorrow. Yeah. I don't know, maybe we'll throw in some birding tomorrow. We'll have to decide. Anyway, we'll announce it tomorrow morning. Right now I just wanted to start by showing you how to make tongs. Um, this is pretty easy. You might be able to uh, just get a stick. You want a green stick. Some, well, you don't have to, but it's a little bit easier. And so I just started this one here. This is a hazelnut. You also want to make sure that it's something that's an edible plant, or not poisonous at least, uh, because you'd probably be touching food. Or you don't want the smoke to get you either. If yeah, you're burning something, it's dangerous. Burning. And so this is about the right length for moving coals around the fire, or working around the fire. And then you'll want to touch it up, take off, you know, the extra branches. And then uh, I'm going to take off this. I have some, I've started wrapping this up, and I'll show you why in just a second. But uh, I'm going to take this branch off. This is a live hazelnut. Although, you know, we really should keep this hazelnut growing because it's a hot commodity. It's number two best thing uh, leaf around here for toilet paper, natural toilet paper, as we described in last week. Just going to talk about that branch in particular? Well, no, I think I'm going to talk about it. He'll okay. do hazelnut again later. Okay. Anyways, let's go over to the fire, and I'll show you how to um, make this into tongs. We're going to grab some coals out of the fire and see if we can travel that coal, uh, save it all the way till tomorrow. Do you like my camera? I, oh, you know what, I think I might be um, using Wi-Fi, but we'll see if it still works. I don't know, I don't think I can. Hopefully okay. yours will work. Okay, well, anyways, um, next thing you want to do to get this going is wrap this up, because you're going to be splitting this piece of wood, and you don't want it to split all the way down. This is going to basically be your, be your handle right here. So I'm going to wrap that up. This is jute um, string that I'm using, but of course you can use anything. Probably not something synthetic like paracord because if that got a spark or something on it, it would melt and really hurt. Um, so I'm going to just cut this off right here. Did, were you going to mention something, Kim? No, just the smell would be very toxic. Yeah, that's for sure. All and right. goodness knows we want to keep our lungs healthy. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. This time. Speaking of which, how's everybody's mood out there? Um, and it was kind of hard to live differently than we've been used to living before. And there's a lot of concern. Uh, of course, we here at Wolf Camp are also a bit concerned um, that we're going to be able to keep everybody employed. Um, we're optimistic that summer camp will run, but of course we'll have to run it a bit differently with all our new social distancing protocols, screening, and whatnot. So I'm going to tie this off. And then the next thing you want to do, I showed you this uh, on one day before, but to split this, you just want to put your knife there. I should have made this flat, because one side's going to be bigger than the other, but we can cut that off later. All right, I'm going to put my knife right here, and hopefully it'll split right down the center. I need a good bonker. Oh, let's see. How about... Oh, this is a great bonker. Something nice and heavy. The split right and this is a frost knife again they're about 20 bucks on amazon 
if you, but of course you can't order anything on Amazon hardly right now unless well, it's a food you staple. You can, right? just as long as it's not coming from their warehouse. Yeah. And but that any, changes too. Any knife would be good. Hopefully this will go straight down. Mm-mm. Is it, is it going off going the side? It's going toward you. Oh, okay, well, I am not going to go any further then. Might have to cut it off right here. And the next thing I want to do is have a little um, splitter in here. And I'm going to carve this off. This is going to keep that split apart. All right, so this is going to get put right down in here. Now I'm going to need to rewrap this at this spot because it was if I kept going. By the way, if you want if you want to split something, here's an extra skill. Always pull on the thicker side and it'll thin out on that side. But I'm not going to try it on this on camera because I'll probably break it. <laughs> All right. So we're just going to have shorter tongs going up to about this distance. So wrap it off here. And then actually I just go ahead and use this just like this. I don't really need to cut off this big handle part yet. I might a little bit later. So say this is wrapped up really well. You want to slide your splitter piece in here. And then hopefully yeah. Then I can just squeeze some coals with this. We'll see if it works. I cut this extra string off. And I'm gonna grab a coal that we hopefully will be able to save till tomorrow. And then the other thing I wanna do is, by the way, take a look at this fire here. Um, it's burned down. I had it going about three hours ago. And there's not much left, just a couple coals in here. Might be some coal. And a lot of times you get around a campfire you're like, oh darn, you know, uh, we gotta get the fire going, and guys get around, they start blowing on it, and all that sort of thing. And you really don't have to. I'm gonna show you the crisscross method of getting this back going without even having to blow on it. Of course, my uh, wolf camp instructors, I'm gonna put it before each camera. There's some red coals in there. And I'm gonna, hopefully that'll keep going. I'll get back to that in just a second. Show you how to um, keep that going till tomorrow so you don't have to start a whole new fire from scratch. Now say your fire is about to go out here and everybody's arguing over how the best way to get this going. Oh no, we're gonna run out of wood or it's raining or whatever. This works for when it's raining. Um, hopefully this, you wanna take your best material that you might have around and I prepared some materials. This would be even better than you'd normally ever have because you probably burned up all your kindling when you first started the fire. So it might be a little cheating to put some of this super dry stuff on there. But the first, so I'll take some of the not as good stuff just to make it a little bit harder of a test. Okay, so some bigger pieces. Say this is all you have left. And you just go crisscross. So the first layer, I don't want to put the stuff that'll go really easily. You want to do one layer going across one direction. Some more stuff here. So say, I don't know, right across your bed of coals, the main bed of coals. All right, then your next layer of your next best pieces of wood, you want to go crisscross the other direction. And by the way, you can try to do this even with the uh, a just a hot bed that's, you know, maybe even in the morning. You might have some coals left over, very underneath there. By the way, this is the same method to get a forest fire going. I bet you half are because people try to cover up their fire. When there's still just one coal in there, that's exactly what the coal wants. It wants to be sheltered and heated up, insulated, and then it bursts into flame after people are gone. All right, so that's crisscross one direction and then the other direction, and then you keep going. I'm not going to use this really good stuff. That'd be cheating. And put your next best stuff across here. There's some branches. And all you're trying to do here is create insulation over your coals because right now all the coals are cooling down and that's how you put a fire out. You open it up, spread it out and let it cool down really fast. So I'm going to keep going crisscross, crisscross. Do another layer this direction now with the next best stuff that you might have. And across the other direction. There. 
and crisscross the other way with your next best stuff. And you're basically, we're going to see by the end of this broadcast, that's some really good stuff. I'm take it down lower. Whether this just automatically self combusts like magic into flame. This is the exact same thing you want to do if it's raining out. You want to shelter your fire. And this is not somewhat to keep your the rain off, but really just to insulate it. That's really smoking over the one that I pulled off. Mm -hmm. Well, let's see if that gets going by the end of the broadcast. And if not, we might have to do a wanna blow. <laughs> <laughs> right at 6.30. Okay, so this coal that I had separated out over here, there's still some red in there. And uh, I'm going to grab some materials, some coal extending materials, stuff that doesn't blow up into a flame. And examples of that would be not something like this that's really nice and, uh, you know, flammable that goes up into flame, cedar bark or cottonwood bark or sage bark or birch bark. Don't do that. What you want to do is something that's not quite as flammable. Um, and that has some coal extending uh, capabilities, like any seed down, you know, thistle seed. Uh, oh, the best thing would be mugwort leaves are really nice, so certain kind of leaves. Um, this is cattail, and I'm going to put the coal in there, and, uh, and then we want to basically snuff it out almost, so almost there's no um, oxygen. So that hopefully it'll last till tomorrow. And then around that, I want to put my next best stuff. This is some old raffia. Um, if it did get into the, some of the, too much of this, it might uh, burst into the flame, and we don't want that prematurely. And then you want your uh, the stuff that does flame up on the very outside of it. So I'm going to take this coal. Not this big, huge one. You're going to put it in the other burn bowl. By the way, did I mention that we might do burn bowls one of these days? It'd be kind of fun around the fire. Um, okay, so I'm going to pour this into the there we go into the cattail, and oh yeah, it's definitely smoking. Okay, so I got the cattail going. Now I'm going to kind of snuff it out a little bit, but not too much. Then I'm going to put my next best, some flammable stuff around the outside of it. Oh, yeah. And then I'm going to save it inside these two burn bowls for tomorrow. Let's see here. Yeah, I can feel the heat. I'm going to wrap it up. And, of course, I have some cottonwood bark I can wrap around. Don't want it because <laughs> Lily <laughs> after the birds and oh, the uh, hawks on the side. That's why oh, the hawks on the side. Yeah, yeah. can't wait here. to our birding day. All right, so I'm gonna see if I can fit this inside of this burn bowl and then cover it up with this burn bowl. Right now, it still needs some oxygen. Make sure there's still coals and I didn't snuff it out. And then I'm going to save it between these two. And you can just travel with this. Um, you can be blowing on it if you feel like it doesn't have enough oxygen. You can smush it uh, together to snuff it out if you think it's going to blow up into a flame. And that's the ugliest thing I've seen, but it's. Um, <laughs> I'll work on it more after we're off camera and uh, see if we can get it tomorrow in a safe spot, obviously. So I put that right there for now. Oh, it is getting hot already under there. Check this out, everybody. Yeah, you can tell there's smoke, there's fire. And just so we make sure that we're not cheating, I'm gonna push this big piece of wood that was going out of here so that we know that's not what's gonna start it. It's those little coals that were underneath that are gonna get it going. All right, well, that's some more fire skills. Should we uh, switch over to some uh, finishing some rope skills? All right, so Kim's going to bring some rope over. By the way, I'm going to finish off with a song by, might be the most beautiful song of Western history ever written. 
by Jack Gladstone. Um, he travels around the West a lot and is often performing at Glacier National Park during the summers. And um, so I'm going to finish this is his uh, best, and I agree, although he has many, many that are. It is called Land When the Land Belonged to God, and it's about Charlie Russell, the great Western American painter. And uh, so anyway, turn it over to Kim here now. Where Should are you going to sit? sit? I don't know. Oh, sure, I don't right there. Sit by that. Yeah, yeah. Like Go that ahead. That. Well, it'll be behind you, so if it does, fire. then <laughs> we'll know. All right, go ahead. Okay. Do you think they can both see you? I don't know. I guess we'll find out. Oh, this is a funny angle. <laughs> okay, so we talked about how to holding, and you start with your two strands, you take the top strand, you spin it away from you up and over the mountain, and then you bring it toward yourself, cross it over the first one. Pinch where it crosses with your pincher fingers and then let it go. So that's where we ended. And now we want to splice. So what I did, which means add another piece, is I just cut this green one off and pretended that this was the end of our rope. So what you do to splice on a new piece, you can do it um, many different ways. Um, but what I like to do is take your new piece, lay it right over the top, and I like to lay, cross it with um, about the same distance of, of um, raffia or material as you have left. So you can see it's just about an inch and a half that's left. So I'm going to take about an inch and a half and lay it right over there so I've got that sticking out the other side. And then I'm going to pretend like this part that is the end of my rope is connected to this brand new one. And I'm going to start by spinning it away. And when I wrap it in front this time, I'm gonna take the little flag end that sticks out and fold it down. So now this little flag end is joining this long piece of beige colored raffia um, to add strength there. So it's gonna make a thicker rope, but that's really a good thing because you want your rope to be similar thicknesses on both sides. So if you just stuck it in on one side and not the other, then it would be really, really thick on one side, really, really thin on the other. And you could take little bits of the piece of the end of your rope and push it, push it to the other side to try to get the sides to equal out. Um, but it's way easier to do this. So just tuck the end of your new strand down and then pretend like it's a part of the beige one. So you'll spin it away, wrap it in front, pinch it, let it go. Now I've got this little end here. It was the end of the new piece and my old beige raffia. I'm gonna spin it away, wrap it in front, and continue back and forth. Spin it away, wrap it in front, spin it away, wrap it in front. And the crow's too getting bad, that hawk. Yeah, too bad we're now <laughs> our birding, our birding adventure day trying to find the hawk nest and stuff because the crow is dive bombing the red tailed hawk over on their snag. Okay. So as you work your way down, you can see that it's a lot thicker, but that is okay. This doesn't have to be beautiful. It has to have a purpose. Well, it is still beautiful, I think. So when you get to the very end of your old rope, your new spliced piece will just take over and your two pieces will be equal widths and you can continue on where you left off with some nice long pieces. All right, and then those little teeny bits that are sticking out, if they drive you crazy, just snip them off with some scissors, that's totally fine. And that will give you a nice, strong splice. Remember, weak is part of your rope, you wanna do the best you can with it, make it nice and strong, and this is how I do it. Okay, I'm gonna grab my other piece of raffia and show you something else, hold on just a second. Just Bye. wanted to preview our next uh, future burn bowls and burn spoons. Oh no, I'm back. As well, as, okay. And then um, we might also do some um, learning how to do char cloth. Oh, and okay, striking. Cool. Yeah. And here's okay. a just a little example of a little burn bowl. And this might turn into a spoon. Okay. Cool. Alright. So this is a nice long piece of rope that I made. I'll bring it up nice and close. Whoa. It's really great. So we're gonna teach you how to make this even stronger. And the way that you do it, let's just say that you have a super long piece of it. You just fold it in half. And then the process that I taught you about spin it away, bring it toward yourself, cross it, pinch it, and let it go. You're going to do the exact same thing, only backwards. So right now, instead of spinning it away, I'm going to spin it toward myself. And instead of wrapping it in front, I'm going to wrap it right behind. Pinch it, let it go. Spin it toward, wrap it be or spin it toward you, wrap it behind. 
towards you, wrap it behind. Now check out that nice beauty. Oh yeah, even stronger right there. Now think about how big this would have to be to build those bridges in Peru. So cool. So definitely try to look it up on um, YouTube. Great videos on that. I had one last thing if you think oh, I yeah, still have time. Mm -hmm. Or not really. Okay, I was going to teach you guys how to do a triple. A triple is really, really beautiful. And we teach the kids at camp this. And one of my camp groups decided they wanted to see how many pieces of raffia they could get and make a rope out of. And so they got up to seven and they realized that it was really, really challenging. And so they decided that three was actually the best and the most beautiful um, rope that they could make. So I'm just gonna tie three colored pieces together and you will see how easy this is. It is so easy. So all you do is you just pinch where you need to start. Oh dear. And you have your three separate pieces start with the one on top and go back to the original method you just take that little critter and you spin it away wrap it toward you pinch it let it go and then you do the next one spin it away wrap it toward you pinch it let the brown one hang down take the beige one spin it away wrap it toward you pinch it let it go and so I'm gonna keep on doing this for a little bit and then make a little sample for you so I'll let Chris take over yeah I guess we'll and just then I'll get back with you and show you how beautiful it is with the song. And um, make sure that the cameras sound. are on the, <laughs> don't have to, um, do you put want this to on. Oh, you, okay. you, you want to mention the camera? No, no, I just okay. want to be nice and I don't know if this is a uh, good enough spot. I guess it is. It is However, I might need to hold have that up. Otherwise, I'll be looking. Now. Oh, we can just put it right here on the tripod. Mm. Yeah, watch this. Slide oh. it up. Oh. Okay, go ahead. Put it on there. Oh, okay, that's let, good. let no, me that's do good. it. No, let, let go. Let go. <laughs> Marital disagreement. I know, but <laughs> I'm right. I have it. No, you don't have to it's have it. It's not wide enough. I got it. It's not wide enough. Just let me do that here. There we go. All right. Okay. Good enough. <laughs> uh, uh, okay. So I'll the hold it. Always go. <laughs> Always do the wife's do method. The wife's <laughs> method. <laughs> oh. All right. Jack Gladstone. You can go to, I don't know if he has a website directly himself, but he definitely has a big following on Facebook. Uh, so check him out and grab his, uh, download his. Hey! Oh, did it? It did it. Did it? Ah, there's flame. All right, good. Without any effort. Uh, Patrick and Charlie, your wanna blow is not needed if you're watching. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Might have to uh, move everything back so that we're not right. Can you go ahead and move the cameras back a little bit? Sure. I'll move this one. Okay. Uh, so that I'm not getting blasted by the fire. How's that? Sure. All right, here goes. I'm closer. Okay. I love this song. The purest gift is not of gold, but in art that awakens the soul. On a spring eve of 16, Charlie Russell departed from his St. Louis home. A young man whose big dreams had delivered a call to the heart. So by train and stagecoach, he made his way through an endless sea of grass that blew to the shore. The big skies and broken when the land below. A rising choir of buffalo Mountains with sentinels were creatures below Stirring tones from long ago That survived an eclipse of the soul As the curtain closed on our noble play Before the stage was struck By caches and surveyors He carefully captured the scene Unbroken song where the land belongs Where all the wild kin of man Had danced in rhythm with the land Grizzly bear and grey wolf Were first chiefs Where episodes of old man's travels Helped his people first unravel A mystery of sacred time the careful hand when 
chosen colors are dry, the vision forever stands. The purest gift is not of gold, but an art that awakens the soul. As we choose our trail up the great divide to an unknown stage on the other side, we might realign with the scenes of big skies, unbroken sound, where the land belongs. Kim's going to say one last thing, but I just want to wish you well. See you tomorrow, and oh. keep on keeping on. She's going to show you one last thing. This is what the triple looks like. Yay, triple. Bye. Bye. <laughs>